it's getting bright. Getting bright, but in the center. Oh, there it is. Oh, God. Did I get sucked in? Help! I can't actually get out. I'm trying to get out! What is going on, guys? Dre here, and welcome back to space. Today, we're going to be checking out one of the most impressive space sandboxes that I've personally ever seen. This one is called Space Engine. Now, this has been in development for quite a few years now, and it was just released on Steam. So we're going to be checking it out today and literally exploring the cosmos. And when I say that, you can go anywhere. Uh, now, it's a lot like uh, Universe Sandbox 2. I know a lot of you guys are fans of that. That one really focuses on the physics of planets impacting each other. You can't do that in this game. This is all about exploration. You are literally exploring the whole universe, and I mean that. And you can land on the planets themselves. So obviously we're at Earth right now, the very beautiful blue planet. And before we go down on a planet, let's appreciate the sheer scale of this. So you can explore anywhere in the universe you want. We're going to speed up time a little bit right now uh, so we can actually get out to... You know, some more impressive stuff here. We're going to be leaving the Milky Way probably soon. We're going eight light years a second right now. we got to go a little bit faster than that to get out of the Milky Way. I mean, this can kind of show you the scale of the universe here. And all these things, like, for example, if we did want to go somewhere here, I saw there was actually... Oh, we're not going to ever be able to find it again. There was like a cluster of stars I wanted to go to. But, for example, if I wanted to explore this star here, this is Hades. It is an orange supergiant that is a binary star, so there should be two stars rotating in upon each other. We're going to hit the quick travel button that will basically select this point that I wanted to go to and travel directly towards it. I'm going to hit it again to go extra fast and wait for it to load. There we go. As I said, binary stars, so we have two stars that are orbiting each other in the middle of this solar system. And you can literally explore anything. And also, another cool feature of this, what is going on right now? I have no idea. Okay, so I think it's just the lighting. I mean, these are obviously two really bright suns, or stars. I, I'm going to call them suns because our sun is, well, our star is named sun, and uh, I always get that confused, but they are stars. Anyways, we can actually hit F6. That's the wrong button. Let's not go to that just yet. We can hit F8 here, and we can actually see what's going on in this system right now. So this is a very basic system. We have Hades A and B with no planets around it. So unfortunately, this one's not that interesting. But So if we go out again, let's go to a different system here. We Again, pick anyone you want. This one's pretty bright and cool looking. So this is the Metsuta. It's a white dwarf, possibly. Yep, that definitely looks like a white dwarf. Whoa! It's egg-shaped. Well, that's I didn't expect that. That's really trippy, actually. Now, is there anything rotating around this? No! Once again, I'm getting extremely unlucky looking for planets. Now, there's a lot of stars in the in the uh, universe, though, and uh, not all of them have planets, so we're going to zoom out again. Oh, look at that. We're actually at the edge of our Milky Way now. So, you know what? Let's just get out and go to a different galaxy. Maybe we'll get more lucky with planets there. But yeah, I did really want to show you the scale of this, uh, because it's truly overwhelming. Now, I should also mention, not all these are actual planets and actual stars. There's a lot of procedural generation going on here for the uncharted areas of the universe. There is over a thousand planets and suns and everything else that is actually real-world counterparts, though. Or real-universe counterparts, because we're going on a bigger scale. <laughs> So yes, yeah, so a lot of procedural generation is in play. We'll actually tell you if we hit the information if it's real or not. Uh, this is a real object. Okay, we got lucky and actually got a real one. Now, it will say procedurally generated or something like that if it wasn't real. So this is Galaxy NGC 4889. You know what? Let's go to that galaxy, see what's going on there. That sounds fun. And this is kind of what this game is all about. Looking through the cosmos, looking for interesting things to find. We can go to black holes, we can go to clouds. All that fun stuff. Okay, this is a really faint uh, galaxy here. Let me actually get in here so we can actually see the stars of this. Because there's got to be stars in this. Yeah, there we go. And now we're actually in this cluster of a galaxy here. And again, we can click anything. So not all the stars are real, but it's meant to mimic the actual universe in the sheer size of it. So let's go over and check out what's going on with this thing. The procedurally generated part of this, this uh, game. And there we go. We've warped over to it. Once again, please have a planet on this damn thing. Ah! What is this? 
So Torrid Arid Terra. So yeah, it's actually a planet here rotating on this super giant. So we're going to go over to... Actually, we can zoom in and see... Does this thing have any moons on it, for example? Oh, actually, there's more planets here. I didn't zoom in, clearly. So look at this one, for example. It has a bunch of different moons on it. I want to go... I kind of want to see... This one looks kind of Earth-like. Let's head over to that. And there she is in the part of space. We're going to speed it up a little bit. I don't know... Oh, it is just that dark. Look at this. We found a very hot, arid Terra. So it's kind of Earth-like. Does it have water on it? Atmosphere does have CO2 in it. Uh, I don't actually see if there's water on this or not. You know what? Let's go down to visit this planet. How about that? And we'll actually get a look at it. You can see the moon over there that's orbiting this. And we're actually going to be able to land on this thing. I can see a volcano here. I just wanted to show you guys the scale of this. Because if you are a fan of, like, just exploring, this is freaking amazing. Uh, so obviously a very barren planet. But it's actually got some structure and whatnot. And if we wait here, it will be more detailed. Ooh, I just crash landed on it. Which I didn't want to do because then we slow all the way down. But that's fine. But yes, yeah, so you can see the detail does come in when you slow down a little bit. And you can literally explore even procedurally generated planets. And they'll have random things on it. Storms, volcanoes, water, if it's a water planet. All that fun stuff. Once again, though, we're going to leave this and get back to the universe here. And we're going to zoom out again like crazy. I want to see if we can get to the edge of the universe in this game. Well, we don't know much about the edge of the universe. There's speculation, but uh, I don't think there's anything that's been confirmed. So we'll see if we can go all the way out until it, like, stops. Now, obviously, we need to go... We're going three, 326 million light years a second right now. Like, it blows my mind that I can click anywhere and explore any of these if I really wanted to. SBC. Again, if we hit information here, it is a procedurally generated object. So this is a whole procedurally generated galaxy. Uh, I wonder if there's a black hole in the middle of this, because I would like to visit a black hole as well. We're going to go visit that real quick. So yeah, evidently exploring to the middle of a galaxy is really, really difficult. I thought we could basically see what it was rotating around. But the general rule of thumb is pretty much every galaxy in the middle of it has a black hole. At least that's what I've heard. I'm no scientist or anything like that, so don't quote me on that. But uh, I think that's the rules. Anyways, we're going to continue going out here just to see where we can go. And there's any, if there's like a giant galaxy, I'd love to visit that. Oh, <gasps> look, they have stopped. So I think this is the edge of the seeable universe. We've actually made it. It's just black out here. There's nothing more loading in, and if we keep going out, it will just fade to blackness, as you can see. All right. Well, that's what it looks like when you're on the edge, I guess. I can't even look all the way around. Can I? Well, it's got a useful feature as well. We can actually go back to our planet Earth as well. We're going to hit G here and go throughout the whole galaxy. There we go. And, well, that was an easy flight. Okay, now let's explore Earth. I've actually downloaded the Earth DLC, which gives you high-definition textures. Uh, the, the one package I downloaded was Earth. You can actually download the majority of the planets in our solar system. Thing is, Earth alone was 11 gigs. So that kind of shows you the scale of the textures of this amazing uh, free DLC, I should mention. So... You know, if we go down here, it should be a little bit more detailed compared to the one that we already saw. Obviously, I don't think we're going to see homes and buildings and things like that. Maybe one day we'll, we'll have gaming like that. But if we wait around here, it should actually detail itself. I'm assuming we're exploring Africa right now. Oh my god, this is crazy. Now, can we go into the water? That's the bigger question. Are we looking at water right now? No, we're not. And look at the detail, though. I mean, this will be the good, the good uh, areas, I would say. Now, if we go to the big old blue... Oh, can we actually see the storms? Uh, it does look... Oh, I think the clouds are loading in. Something weird's going on in the sky, as you can see. So you might be asking yourself, what do you do with this game? Who really is this for? Well, anyone who has an interest in space, obviously, this is going to be a great game for them. But there's actually, like, points of interest you can go to. Obviously, you can look for them on your own as well. Oh, wow, that's like a cluster of stars right over there. Uh, what is that? Type open. And that, that's kind of how I play this game. The more I look around, the more I want to explore different things. So it looks like it's just a giant cluster of stars. It's called open. But if we press F6 here, we can actually go to featured locations. And there's a bunch of different... A rubber ducky comet. Uh, see, like, there's a lot of different things in here. Basically, points of interest. Now, galactic monster. I want to go see that right now. We're going to go to that. And I like that feature. If you don't want to actually explore yourself, you can just go... 
and rate to whatever you want in that list. So this is the galactic monster. It is a black hole, as you can see. Actually, we're at the center of the Milky Way. So this is the center of the Milky Way. If we were to zoom out, which I kind of want to do now just to see it at the center of the Milky Way, this is what everything's rotating around. And like I said, at every center of the uh, at any every center of a galaxy, there tends to be a black hole. And that's no different for the Milky Way as well. Oh, look at the star cluster around that black hole because it's sucking them all in. You can clearly see there's a dense ball of them there. And if we go out, we go out, we go out. There's our Milky Way right there. And we're going right into the center of it. Oh, Jesus, too fast. Okay, let's go back. Let's press G. So we can turn on different modes as well. This is the auto mode. It will try and uh, give you the right lighting for what you're looking at. But look at this high dy dynamic range mode. You can actually see all the stars and whatnot behind this very impressive black hole here. Uh, let's see if we can see the actual center of the black hole. So I'm going to slowly go in so we don't miss it because it's obviously not very big. Oh, it's getting bright. Getting bright, but in the center. Oh, there it is. Oh, God. Did I get sucked in? Help! Pl I can't actually get out. I'm trying to get out! Okay, let's let's get the hell out of here. I think I landed on the black hole because I'm going very slow right now. So let's get... Let's zoom out a little bit. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. And, oh, yes, that's what I wanted to see. The warp of space itself. Okay, let's get out of this view. There we go. We have the auto mode now. So it's just changing the exposure composition, basically, of the actual shot. So we have a better visual reference. Holy crap. Okay, I can't actually go inside the black hole, it looks like. Wait, did I just go in it again? Did I just get lost again? Ah, damn it. I landed on the black hole again. Just seeing a black hole and kind of how it affects space is really interesting to me. So you can actually see where the particles are shooting out of it. Like, I don't know what goes into a black hole, so I'm not going to try and teach you guys how this thing works because I don't even know what I'm looking at. And let's go see what else we can do here. The first black hole imaged. Okay, so there's a lot of different things in here. Blue ringed planet. Ooh, that sounds cool. The Ringed Nebula. You know what? Let's go see the Ringed Nebula. We're going to go to that. It's so pretty. All right. Let's go inside the Ringed Nebula here. See what's what we're working with inside this. There's a little star here. And interestingly enough, on this solar system, we have one planet with life. Uh, so from what I get out of this structure right here, I was trying to understand what the planets were rotating around. Being that these are two binary star systems, they're both the center of this solar system. So it's combined with this little triangle here. And these are the different planets on this thing. Now, which one has life? Wait, is it a moon that has life? Because this... So this planet here, it has a moon with life on it. I'm assuming that's what it was talking about then. I'm still learning this game very much so. So I don't know if one of the planets does as well, but this moon has life on it. Organic multicellular subglacial. Okay, so we have subglacial multicellular life there. All right, well, let's warp to that, see if we can uh, see anything on that. So that's interesting, a moon with life. I didn't think about that, but that can definitely happen as well. We're slowly going into it. This is obviously a very big solar system, so I'm gonna speed it up a little bit. And bam, look at that. It looks very much like our moon. What is that shiny little thing on it? What the hell is that? Oh, is that an impact? It's gotta be like a major, what, what would do that? Whoa, what is that? Okay, hold on. I'm very curious now. I'm trying... Oh, God. What did I do? What did I do? What did I do? What would make this? That's got to be a really heavy freaking object. I don't... I can't even explain how this would happen. Okay. So it's the moon penis, as I would call it. See, it would make sense that it was a crazy impact, but why is there a giant cone in the middle? I don't... I don't get it. I... D is this... This has got to be procedural gen gen generation, right? And there's life somewhere on here, too. Oh, there's another one. So these things are everywhere. That's really cool to see the giant craters on the planet, though. Or moon, I should say. We have an exploding galaxy? Hell yeah, we're gonna go to ex an exploding galaxy. So, obviously, in the center of this, we have a black hole that I'm assuming is starting to be created. Look at the size of this thing, though. This is freaking crazy. I mean, you don't really appreciate the scale of the universe until you play a game like this and truly understand how big it is. We got clusters inside this thing, as you can see. Star clusters. I don't think we'll ever get to the center. Is this the center here? Uh, it's a diffuse. I have no idea what a diffuse is. Is this it right here? This is... Go oh, wow. Okay, I think I found the black hole. Look at that! That is so crazy to me. Okay. Let's get in here and see what's going on in the center of this star cluster. 
Well, yeah, I can't really find... Oh, actually, is that it there? Or is that... Whoa, what am I looking at? Carbon star, so I can still hit the, st the stars if I want to. Globular. No idea what that is. I guess let's go to that. Because I don't know if that's a star or not. It's a globular. Whatever that means. Oh, is... Okay, so I turned back on the stars. Is this whole thing considered a globular? I, d I, don't, I don't know space terms, man. So whatever a globular is... I think that's it, and it's just a giant star cluster inside the center, or more or less the center of this galaxy. Oh, dude, this is trippy. We are now on another moon. This is RS8496 dash blah blah blah, but you can actually see a nebula from the moon. Like, I'm on the moon's surface right now just chilling, and look at this. Let's actually speed this up to see what it's like. Oh, trippy. Trippy. Uh, we obviously got some a planet ro rotating with a moon over there. So this is obviously another moon rotating that planet right there. But I love that you can see the nebula in the night sky on this thing. That, oh god, this game is so cool. Just to explore and experience this stuff. Let's see what we're looking at when we actually zoom out. So there's the nebula over there. It looks way better when you're looking on the surface of this moon. This is Nebula RN8496-5501. Is that a real place? procedurally generated. All right, well, that, that makes it a little less fun, but still really cool. Okay, so it's hard to judge scale. This is uh, WOHG642 mass. This is a red supergiant. It's actually the biggest known star in the universe. Look how lumpy it is. It's got hot spots, very cold spots, obviously. Hard to judge the scale, obviously, because we don't have anything to compare it with. I really wish we could compare it to the sun. Well, here we are at its solar system. We actually have how many planets on this? Five. You can't even see them because they're so close together, it looks like. Uh, maybe there is only one here. What is this? This is another sun. No. Is there planets rotating on this? Oh, my God. They are... It's just... It's so big. You can't even see these things unless you're really close up. And these are giant planets just judging by the moons. But, yeah, it kind of shows you the scale of this place. You know what? Let's go over to the closest planet, which will be this guy, and just see what it looks like looking at something the size of that. So here we are going over to it now. And looking over there, there's the giant freaking sun. So just out of curiosity, let's go down to this thing. All right, yeah, looks like we're not going to see much on this planet just due to its atmosphere. If we change to... Ooh. We weren't on auto, so can we actually see... You can't see out of the cloud coverage, man. This is uh, this is absolutely crazy. So, yeah, it's looking like there's too much cloud coverage or whatever that is. All right, we're going to get off this bad boy. And you know what? Let's go back to home. So, yeah, I think that's good for this episode, guys. I hope you guys enjoy checking out Space Engine. Now, like I said, there's a lot more to this game. We can drive spaceships. We can obviously explore many more things in this crazy galaxy. I'd like to actually look for maybe another Earth-like planet. That'd be kind of fun. There's also crazy solar systems where you can try and find one with six suns rotating in on each other. Things like that we could definitely do if you guys do like experiencing this. Uh, but yeah, if you want to know anything more about it, link will be in the description. Once again, guys, thank you so much for watching and liking, and I'll see you in the next one.